Puerto Rican kid, bald head, loves snakes, loves Blizzy, Sergio Chacon. Yeah. Yeah. What up, Pa? Yo, peace, peace, peace. Welcome to the BBS podcast. It's your boy Sergio Chacon, aka Blizzy Chacon. That shit's wax. That means always gonna be dirt bag shit podcast. The BBS I was going to call you a philanthropist, but you're not that. You're a humanist. <laughs> I'm def- I'm an egalitarian. <laughs> you're an amateur boxer. Well, you're a dope. I'm a, I'm a philosopher. I'm, I'm basically Bruce Lee. With, um, Bruce Lee, zend out. <laughs> She's a cool motherfucker, man. And we're going to go <laughs> through it, how we met. She's also an author of her own book. Man, clap it up for my homegirl. The queen, the god, Aida. Al. A stands for alpha, never beta. Oh, she on what to date. So my people, what? check this shit out. We attempted yeah. to do this podcast uh, last week. We had some technical difficulties. Via- Sergio didn't pay his bills. <laughs> Yo, and we were getting kicked out like a, a dude who right. drank Hennessy on an empty stomach, stomach and it was acting up at the club. We were getting kicked out. Like, I think like four times, right? Yeah, yeah, it was whack. Yeah, it was whack, you know. We got kicked out. As many times as fucking Anthony Joshua got dropped by, <laughs> by Godito, what's his name? Andy Ruiz. Yo, that was, yo, we got to talk about that fight. That was we good. will. We will. So one thing, so a, a quick introduction on how we met. And once again, guys, just for your um, overall understanding, we did the podcast last week. I was annoyed because we really captured the essence of... Who I, eat I have my bonnet. Yeah, man. It was flowing. I still got some of that footage. I may tie it in. I may not. Regardless of the fact, we're going to revisit some of those things. Um, but Aida, we, we met, and I, I think this is just so important. To share. We met via MySpace. MySpace. Eight, nine years ago. Yeah, no, it had to be, yeah, it had to be like 10 years ago, Sergio. Literally. It yeah, it was, was more than that. It was probably like, it was probably like at the time. But the funny yeah. thing is, complete dirtbag status, her profile picture was <laughs> her with a sheepskin hat, sunglasses, and <laughs> you're like two feet above the toilet. Cat Pee. muscles on fleek. <laughs> Yo, teardrop, cat, teardrop quads. And there was well, a... The, yo, but the pee was so clear, right? It was just like concise, like... Yeah, it was just yellow yeah. those walls in the background. <laughs> Because I wasn't drinking water that day. It was like nothing but Hennessy in my body. You were, were Hennessy out that day. But my pee is normally white and clear because all I drink is water for the most part. Just saying. How often, okay, you drink a lot of water. That's good. Every time I have a good day of water, I feel clear and crisp. You know what? You know what's crazy? Well, not crazy. I guess it's interesting. So like when you speak to like indigenous people, they always say that when you before you drink water, say thank you to the water. And it actually, it's, it's some real shit because that shit is like, like what we made up of mostly water. Like that is, you need water to live. That's the reality. So that is true. But I ain't saying thank you to Poland Spring or Essential. Well, not Poland, Poland Spring. Say thank you to the rain that they done <laughs> fucking filtered and alkalinized and all of that shit. But if we do it, it's illegal. Right, right. Yo, but water's dirtbag expensive. I should be drinking rainwater because <laughs> I pay like, what is it, like Yo. $8 a lot of Essential? That's like, my Dog, met- the, the Dwayne Reed shit, right? The essential joints? Yeah, I like alkaline. that. You're paying for alkaline, that's all. I know. I like that. I like that. I feel like it gives me a little boost. It does, because it's energy, it's got the um the electrolytes. Yeah, but you know what's good too? Um throw in if you just drink uh throw an emergency in your water, you get your daily dose of electrolytes too. Yeah, but then it's still an additional listen, I'm not complaining about it. I love essential water, I pay for it, but I treat I treat myself to it. You know, there's some dirt bag water out there. I love it. No, hold on. Trader Joe's, Trader Joe's has some good alkaline water, and it's not that expensive. It's like maybe a little, a couple dollars less than Ascension. Check it out. Okay. All right. Cool. You fucks with Trader Joe's? Yeah, I do. I can't front. They don't. Yeah, me too. No, and I'm not ashamed (laughs) of it. I like Trader Joe's for a number of different reasons. I like the staff that they hired. The staff is super nice. (laughs) No, I mean, yeah, they're hippies. They're yuppies. Hey, guys. How can I help you? They're always, they're mad helpful. Um, 
What's the other Yo, one? I couldn't work with Whole Foods is dirt bag. I don't fuck with Whole Foods. Not, not, not. Me neither. Whole Foods is not. overpriced. The staff <laughs> is not as nice. And that is dirt bag expensive, man. It's like really. Y'all want to hear a funny story? I legit got kicked out of Whole Foods on what's that, 14th Street? In like two that like it was a long time ago. <laughs> oh, now it's a long time ago. Now that's a dirt bag story. Like, yeah, this shit was like <laughs> I was like, yes, it is. It's like, Miss, why are you not wearing how you get, get How you here. get kicked out of Whole Foods? Yo, so first of all, they dumbass expensive. Fuck Whole Foods. So I was looking. They, you know, they used to they do like samples and shit on the on like the basement. I don't know if you've ever been to the one on 14th Street, but if you go to I the know basement, exactly what you're talking about. Yes, right. And you know for the sample yeah. area, right? So first of all, there's no sign that says one sample per customer. That's first and foremost. Yeah, you called your cousins. Yo, they have mad free food out here. I walked away with like four joints myself and they, it was literally a, they went, they flipped. Like, at least in Costco, I'm gonna motherfuckers give you the fucking samples. They were like, here, yeah. here, here, take our expired food. Whole Foods was not playing. The motherfuckers, they literally called security on me. For four That's samples. That's dirtbag. They're right? giving out free food and then limiting what? In all fairness, I'm gonna say this, right? I did kind of look a little like a hood rat at the time. So it might have been a little profiling, and I can't really knock it because I'll be profiling y'all motherfuckers too. So, yeah. Well, when you say y'all motherfuckers, who you mean? White people all or Puerto Ricans? All my people. All my people. <laughs> every, single, every single one of you. Even the fucking age. Oh, first, yo, dog, real quick. And I love Asian people. I'm not trying to offend y'all, but this is some real shit. Like four weeks ago, right? Whenever the, when the COVID shit first, like, really broke out, that's like a month ago. Yo, everyone gets their turn. It's the Asians' turn. Yeah. <laughs> yo, I was. Well, I was on the elevator, right? I was going, I was at work, and uh, the fuck, this Asian guy was on the elevator with me, and he like properly like socially distanced himself. Now remember, this is in March, so this is like when it was like all new and like wasn't nobody really socially distancing, but they were trying to implement it. Mm -hmm. So he stands all the way in the back of the elevator, and I'm like, I get it, but then I was like, wait, I think it should be the other way around because I don't know if you're Chinese, so like if anybody should be socially distancing. It should be me or my bugging. Like an Asian was really tight and me getting in the elevator with him and he was like mad. I said, dog, you might have bought this shit. And I know you did and I'm just being stupid, but like ha, the motherfucker looked at me like I was going to get some COVID. You were like, there's no chance of me being that motherfucker who brought it here. So slow your roll. I was like, dog, you looking at me like, like your mom probably bought this shit and you literally like getting mad at me getting on the elevator? That's cool. <laughs> Yeah, you know what's what's interesting about um this whole social distancing thing that I'm 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 now conditioned to behave that way. I'm be, the way that guy behaved, present day, I'm doing that. I'm walking around with a mask and I'm giving people dirty looks under the mask like this. I'm having a fit under that mask if yeah. I see someone like coming too close. I'm like, damn man, I can't believe I turned to this person. And this is probably something that we're not gonna shake off for some time. Don't say we, cause I don't even wear a mask unless I gotta be around people in public. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, I got my own. Listen, I do my research. I there's a lot of things. Yeah, yeah. No, I get that. But if someone plays you a little a uh, closer than the six feet, do you get a little bit like turned off by it, or you don't really care? Here's the thing: I've always been socially distant. Me personally, cause I like my space. I'm just like, <laughs> You're like I've always been antisocial. It don't take it don't take a pandemic to make me make me antisocial. Really? I've been antisocial. Listen, you don't understand how happy I be on the subway now. I was like, yes, yes, because I fucking hate when people's and they they always be want. You know what it is? It's because I'm like a real New Yorker, right? And you know how real New Yorkers are. You you there's like your personal space and like an additional few inches. That's like a New Yorker space. Like mm -hmm. that's how we operate. But once the fucking all these fucking transplants and gentrifiers, they don't know. Like New York, like it's like an unwritten code of ethics, right? Like right. on the subway, you gotta let people off before you get on the fucking train. It's like certain things that like people know. Or once again, on the subway, you know, like if you bought it, like if the train is, if all the seats are taken, you stand in, you stand by the door. Like you don't stand in front of a motherfucker that's sitting down when the fucking door is. It's like certain things that you do or don't do. And I feel it's like common sense. It's, so, it's not as common as you think, baby. I know, but I put that in the category of common sense. A lot of motherfuckers don't have it. But you know, think like common sense is not necessarily common, right? Because who created that term? The working class, people with you know power and blah blah. That's a whole other history lesson. Because I'm, you know, I'm a historian and shit too. But 
I think it's oh, like God. The, 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 but the transplants, I hate like, these. Like when you're in a store, if I'm in a fucking bodega, like they want to stand like right next to you. I'm like, no, like give me some fucking space. So this shit, I'm happy. I'm happy with this shit. Yeah, yeah. Happy. I, I've happy. said this before. I, I enjoy the quiet streets. I you heard that? I just whistled while I talk. I just whistled. I heard that. That was kind of cool. And I got all my teeth, even though this is a fake tooth. I mean, that shouldn't be happening. Uh, Yo, I, you got a gold tooth or no? What kind of fake tooth you got? Porcelain? <laughs> it might be porcelain. Can you tell which one it is? No, not yet. But you know, it's crazy because I'm trying to get. I want to get an implant for um one of my molars, and they not. They trying to. They said that it's. It's cosmetic, so my insurance won't pay. Ah, uh, is it really cosmetic? Is it fully? Is it removed? But I'm gonna show you. Y'all I don't want to see that shit. shit. No, you probably can't see it. Uh, I got an abscess tooth left in my mouth. I got to take it out. But like, the problem is like I had another tooth removed, and they said if you take two at the same time, then the upper teeth might start to sink in. It's like a whole dental shit. So that, you know, yo, what they, they're dirt bagging. That's, that's not cosmetic. That's a real health issue right there. It is, but I'm gonna go to NYU because I let the student dentists work on me, so I don't have to pay that much money. So this one. Yeah, I got that shit done too. When I first got my tooth, uh, because there's a bond. Cool. So, you paid a hundred dollars, right? Yeah, yeah, by some nervous kid. <laughs> some kid with, with yeah. sweaty palms like love this. Love that I'm just, shit. I'm just looking at him like this. Do your thing. Do your thing, Bob. <laughs> you good? And you good? Just, you know, yo, the motherfucker be like poking me my gums. It's okay, baby. It's cool. You practicing? I get it. <laughs> <laughs> For real, I was mad cool. He was nervous. He was like 15 years old, like this. <laughs> and yo, he did it wrong like right? twice. I tried to. It was a. It was actually. A, it was a filling. It was a filling. So it was like a little offset. I was like, yeah, I think I think I need this uh, filed down a little bit. And then the real the the real doctor who went to who finished school. Yeah, the dentist. Yeah, yeah, shave it down a little bit. Yeah, the actual dentist. But yeah, I'm all for I being a guinea shit. pig. They got to learn, A, like, how do you think these doctors and dentists learn? That's A. And B, I'm broke. So I'm paying $100. Fuck my mouth up if it's only 100 I'm cool. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and real. I know that could be taken in a lot of different ways. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. It's a motherfucker yeah, like I'm you. I'm the know. same way. You know? Yo. I mean it in every way y'all want to take it. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, but it's true, man. That's the way you got to move around. You got to be smart. Like, I'm not going to spend a G to get a filling. I'm going to go to the, 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 the nervous dentist, the, the nervous student, and let him fuck with my mouth a little bit. Well, jokes aside, though, I know you're Puerto Rican. If you got a hookup for gold teeth, I really want a fucking gold tooth. You want just a gold yeah. tooth? I mean, I keep that shit in the back, like a gold, a gold like cap or something, yeah. Fuck it. Yeah, I, I I I went to uh I forgot the name of it, but I'll shoot you the information. You it's look funny. like you I got a, uh, Yeah, I got I got it. I got a uh, gold for, uh bottoms, and you probably seen on Instagram me flossing them. But when I got oh, them, you do? I was embarrassed to wear them because I felt like my 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 wife was gonna make fun of me. <laughs> so she was like, "What the hell is wrong with you? You're damn near forty, and you got gold bonds because this was like a year or two ago." <laughs> They, you got gold bottoms when you go through a midlife crisis. And I was like, <laughs> thinking, yes, exactly. I am going through a midlife crisis. <laughs> but I like them. Yo, They're fun. But let me ask you, does she make fun of you in general? Oh, she me? Shit? Okay, so my wife, Liz, my daughter, Charlie, we all make fun of each other hard. It's me usually <laughs> against them. But we go at each other all day. That's how we fill our days. It's mad That's fun. Dope. Yeah, I was, my I'm daughter, my daughter got jokes. Out. I'm oh I call we sparring. You already know I'm trying. I've been trying to get some work from her, man. That's another I'm thing. So we, we initially met, and I want to go back. We initially met via uh, MySpace. Then you actually came to a comedy show early on. You come to a couple of them, and then I've come to find. Two out, drink minimum. I want to always input interject this. This motherfucker had a two drink minimum at this comedy show, and I brought like five motherfuckers with me. So I literally had to buy ten drinks at Manhattan prices. Just throw yeah, that out there. Yeah, she got kicked out of the comedy club too, like a Whole Foods. <laughs> <laughs> now you're well behaved. And then the Good second drink. show you came to, you came with shades on. And what you said, one of the comics who you the enjoyed said, was like, yo, she got my said, domestic abuse said. glasses on. <laughs> that shit was funny though. But what was so what was even funny, I was like, yo, what if I actually was getting beat up on my boyfriend? I, know. I, should, I thought about telling him that just to fuck with him. And then I think I forgot, but I should have told you. You know, you might have said it. I think you did. We were all laughing. I think you did. Maybe I did, because I'm a cunt. I probably did say it. 
Yo, that mm-hmm. shit is funny, man. You're the only one that uses the word cunt, and I don't, I don't, I don't flinch at it. Other people use it. I go, oh, but you use it fluently. Well, maintain eye contact. I don't contact. know why people hate that word. Everyone hates that word. Like, yeah, I don't... it's the way it's said. I think it's just the way it's, it's said. Uh, certain people can 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 spew it, and it sounds fine. Other people say it, and you go like, oh. you know, hmm. it depends. It really depends on who's saying it. The the uh, the intention. Um, I think it's all that. See, so like, I did like, cause I know a lot of women, like for the most part, hate that word, um, especially older women. And when I, I started doing research, I'm just like, why do they hate it? The only thing I could find was like, men used it as like a derogatory term to women. And I'm like, all right. It's a loaded, it could right. be a loaded word. I mean, but you know what the origin of it, right? It comes from a goddess, so. Yeah, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Well, that's, the, or that's why I use it. Yo, like, you, wanna, you wanna hear some wild shit? I actually, this is how dumb I was in high school. I was in high school, right? I'm not a kid. I'm a teenager, but you know, I'm not like a kid kid. So, <laughs> so I actually thought the cunt was a part of a woman's vagina, like a clitoris or something. So I was in science class or biology class, some class, and the teacher had said something. And I was like, oh, kind of like, like a cunt. And she was like, what? And I was, cause we were talking about, uh, the, the female, you know, anatomy, yeah, yeah anatomy, and, and I said that, yo, she couldn't believe that I didn't know that was part of the woman's body. Like, I was like, no, I thought it was like, you know, part of like the clit, or I, I thought it was a real, <laughs> but to this day, maybe that's why I have a problem with that word, because I got in so much trouble. She thought was, I was she, she was older, or was she a young teacher? She was younger, and I was like, yo, my bad, like, I was like, my bad, I really didn't know. And she told my mom, my mother was like, well, I was like, mom, I'm just an idiot. I had no idea. I didn't know that. Yo, first of all, that word wasn't used. Like, I'm, you know, it's not really used where we're from. Like, in, yeah. in, it's like, a, it's more of a white word. It is. Right? So I never really heard it. I never heard it before. <laughs> I got in a lot of trouble for that shit. That makes sense. That's, that's true, because most of the women I know that are offended by it are white women. Like, they're, they're, offended by, they're offended by everything. Everything, yeah. So... It's like, mm. what, what did Dave Chappelle say that I, I still quote? You said, you were in on the heist. You just ain't like your cut. So <laughs> can't feel bad. For real. Uh, let me so flex yeah. my so we have, we, we, uh, Moving in chronological order down the line. And then I, uh, you know, I've always respected you and your ability to articulate yourself. And whether that be in person, I always found you funny. But then I find out. You you rap, but when you rap, I felt like you always uh, a little and uh, and you can uh, give me your insight on this. I always felt yeah. like you were a little tentative and sheepish when you first started rapping because I knew some other people who knew you, and I was like, damn, I've heard her music before, but she seems like she doesn't want to tell anybody or whatever. Fast forward to now, I listen to you. I'm a huge fan, and like the confidence and like the ownership of your art is there. And I love the twist of like Caribbean, like some, not all the songs are like that. So let, I'm being a little too loose with that, but it's a nice mix of lyricism, it's a Caribbean beat, it's aggressive, it's clear, it's articulate. And it's also like, like it's like uh, the, the jargon you use, it's kind of timeless. I'm a fan and that's why I got to decorate it with all that fly shit because it's real good music. And yo, top it all off, I mean, I'm surrounded by women. I was raised by women. So this is the topic on top of the, the cake. It's like empowering for women. It's like it got that 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 tilt to it. Like ooh. I just say cunts a lot. That's all. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean that's the that's the oxymoron in it. <laughs> but it's fucking, it's really good shit. So where are you Thank with that? You. you got like four LPs out. Uh this year, yeah. The four EPs this year. I think you, I got you, so you dropped four projects in one year? In yes. one year? Yes. So that's a rhythm. Every month. That's like... Every single month. Every single month this year. January, and they're all February, tied February. in with, with... So we got... All of them have Gator as a title, right? Yep. What is it? Birthday Gator, Gator Tapes, Reckless Gator, and what's the Winter last one I'm missing? Winter Gator, Spring Gator... That's dope. I love that that consistency. And you got that. You got the nickname Gator in the boxing gym. Yo, not even. You know, like I said. How appropriate. Like I said, 
it ain't even a fucking nickname. I literally, when I got back on Instagram, because my ex used to stalk my shit, so I had to like believe. Like, <laughs> Yo, you would have a stalker. <laughs> and I was like, I need. Yo, your stalker I was, was probably like my character sandpaper. That's how we got fucked up. Yo, yo, like, yo, yo, Aida, I just want to talk to you for a minute. Yo, Aida, yo, come saying, downstairs, yeah, girl. Yeah, but I'm just saying, man, but I'm just saying. A lot but of this. I was, I, wanted, I was trying to think of a name that, like, the motherfucker could not, like, think and look up, right, in the, in the search and shit. And alligators are my favorite animal, alligators and felines. And so I was like... What do you mean they're feline? Alligator. Oh, all, alligators and felines. Gotcha. And felines, yeah. I right, love right. cats. All cats. Big cats, little cats. Love them. Um... Cunts, but um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm very astute. I like that but word. Yeah, so like, that's one of my favorite words. But no, nah, so like, I, I put alligator Alfred, and specifically Alfred because the shit rolls off your tongue, and I'm stupid, and I'm a woman. So I was like, why would you name yourself Alfred? I was like, this shit, no one's gonna find me with this fucking name, right? Right, right, right. And then, like, just because people, whatever, people are stupid. So like, when I would be in the gym, people would just be like, yo, what's up, Gator? <laughs> and I was like, what's up? Or like I'd be around and like even with music, people just started saying like, yo, what's up, alligator? And I was like, oh, okay. Like people just started calling me gator. And then like my homeboys, when they'd be rapping, they were like something, something, something with the gator. So I'm Ooh. like, all right. And then I would be joking in my raps and I'd be like, blah, 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 with the gator. And then I was like, yo, this, I mean, it just took on a life of, of its own. Like I really yeah, didn't feel yeah. people just like assume that this was like my music name. And I was like, all right, fuck it. Like, I ain't stupid. Yeah, <laughs> I know yeah, it's branding, yeah. it's branding marketing, free publicity. And what was the crazy shit? People like alligator pages on Instagram send me shit all the fucking time. <laughs> that shit what, is so. What, 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 like, what would they send you? Like shirts and shit with alligators with like merchandise. Like they send That's me shit dope. with alligators, right? So socks, all that. So you know what I mean? And I mean, come on, dog. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, that's tough right there. I even got that's... the look. You got all that shit, and you ain't got one fucking La Tigre shirt. No, what's the one with the no, alligator no. on it? Lacoste, I got that shit out of my closet. You want me to break it out? <laughs> yo, is that your thing? Every time you go to a show, you bring you brought the Lacoste. I don't, I, I don't fuck. I, yo, I never fuck with Lacoste, but I always fuck with Latigre because that was the broke man's version of Lacoste. Yeah. You know, everybody <laughs> had Latigre, like the fucking striped shit. Yeah. I'm about to break that shit back. I'm gonna bring it back. Watch. Yo, but the <laughs> thing is about Lacoste, that shit was like hard like in early 2000. It made a comeback. Yo, you cannot wash those shirts. You wash them, the bottom shrink, of it right? stretches out, the sleeves, oh, wow. really? Yeah, I never know how to take care of a Lacoste shirt. But, oh, I think you gotta get a dry clean, no? Cause they probably- Yeah, that's, a, a, that's how I was, I think I was washing and drying on my own, looking like a, looking like a dad. It looked like I was wearing a gown. <laughs> like I was moving around with a gown. Yeah. Wow. Mm. And it was expensive too, right? Hell yeah, what? man. Wow. I have I got one Lacoste shirt and it's not even mine. I stole it from my best friend. I ain't steal it. I just took it and then told her after. I was like, oh, I took your shirt. I didn't ask to borrow it because she was going to say no. So I took it. And <laughs> I like, it I like how you're trickling in dirtbag shit throughout the interview, right? It's like, yeah, I got kicked out of Whole Foods over some <laughs> dumb shit. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, that two drink minimum at the comedy club. That's why I, I snuck in my own Hennessy in my boot. Oh yeah, I stole it's my cool. French shirt. I didn't steal it. I was joking, but I wasn't playing. Well, I wasn't joking. I was just like, look, like I wasn't gonna ask her to borrow it. Like I said, if I asked her, I knew she was gonna say no. So <laughs> I took it upon myself to take it and then tell her I took it. Huh? You had that shit smell like perfume. You wear perfume. She she's like this, like the fuck this is. No, I still like got this. the shirt. Hold up, <laughs> I can break this shit out right now. I still got it. I believe you. I believe you, thief. <laughs> Yo, you never gave it back to her? Not, you know, in all fairness, though, in all fairness. It's a yes or no answer. No, in all fairness, my friends take my clothes all the time. So, right? It's fair. No, yeah, I don't That's know you had any friends, Aida. You, you, I feel like well, you moved they not like, solo. well, you're right. You're right. People that put up with me. That's probably the better way to, to refer to them as. Actually, I know two of your homegirls from the gym. I know two of your oh. homegirls from the gym. Oh, yeah, who you know? I don't I don't remember names, but there's two. Uh, it was like a guy named Jay Boxing, and then he had a girl that used to compete, and I felt like you guys just spar each other. Oh, Jeanette, yeah, Jeanette, yeah, yeah. Jeanette, Jeannie Poo, yeah, that's yeah. my boo. Hi, yeah. Jeannie Poo, I'm gonna make her watch this too. Yeah, yeah, 
with, with your music, every everything I've heard, there's like a nice mix of like socially conscious shit. I mean, it's smart. I could tell you're a well-read person. And, I it's a about, well and, and that ties it into the, uh, the another known fact that's new to me is that you're an author. You got a book out. Ask what's the name of it? Ask the, Ask the alligator. Ask the alligator. Yes. I so, want well, a free it's not copy. Out yet. We, we, we've gone through publishing. Um, COVID is kind of fucking my shit up. Obviously, I'm gonna try to pull up the uh, the cover of the book just so you can see it. That's dope. So that's that's nice. Ask the alligator, and it's a collection of quotes from you. Yes. So it's basically it's quotes of mine. Some of them are just stupid quotes, and then the other ones have actual advice tied to it, explaining it. Um, but yeah, it's like it's like a self help book, kind of like a chicken noodle soup for the soul, but the hood rat version. Mm. Um, the thing is, men could actually benefit from this too. There's is information that all people can use, but I primarily wanted to gear it towards women. Just I'm a woman, and I believe in like uplifting and empowering women. And one thing I noticed about a lot of women, I guess I don't know, is a generation. What's the '90s babies? What are they? Generation Z, I think. Or generation. I, I'm, a, I'm terrible with that shit, but I get right. it. People born right. in the '90s. So, Especially the women, like when I... But I think it's Generation X. I think you're right. Oh, X. Okay, yeah. Is it X? All right, whatever, man. I can't keep up with this. People get it. I get it. Continue on. Carry on. The the 90s babies. But I usually... And stop doing this shit right here. You look like LL Cool J. I know you're from Queens, but you're like... I feel like you're hollering at me in the club in the 90s. The surge. (laughs) No, continue. You stupid. You're a dirt man. (laughs) No, but I've always seen like the women now, especially the way I see them operate. It's like every time I saw on Instagram, fuck, fuck boys, fuck these, fuck boys. It's like y'all are in so much heartache and you don't realize that, baby, you're the cause of most of it. And I'm, and not, I'm not condoning what men do. I'm not saying men don't cheat and don't do X, Y, and Z. But at the end of the day, you got to realize that you also contribute to how people treat you. And you got to figure your shit out. If you want to get the best, best quality friend, best quality job, best quality boyfriend, whatever the fuck you want in your life, you got to be the best quality you. You can't walk around with your shit not fixed and then be mad when you attract people who shit ain't fixed either, right? So oh, it's kind of like- a gem. Yeah. A word. They either going to hate me or love me when they read it. There's like no- So you feel no like the, um, the, the sentiment of the book is that, like kind of leaning towards that? Generally, yeah, it's a mixture of that, but also literally just like me being an insane asshole. Like, it's like when you read this shit, like I said, like in the preface, I tell people. All right, so let's do this. Let's do this. I want you to swipe five times because five is my favorite number. And then we're going to read. Let you watch me swipe so you know I'm not bullshit. All right. Okay. So, how many? One. One, two, three, four, one more. Five. All right. And. Diamonds may be a girl's best friend, it landed on but self confidence is a woman's most valuable asset. Woo, I like that. And yo, that's that's funny. We were just talking about confidence. We didn't set this shit up, people. That's just and it's you insane. like that's one thing about you. When I, every time I speak to you or every time I read something you share on Instagram, I feel like it's always it's speaking to you, right? confidence. And was that something you felt like you acquired? Um, at a young age, or was it through the sport of boxing, or something later on in life? It's like, uh, you know, because it's abundant. Yeah, it's it's overly abundant. Um, I want to say I, I I definitely had it at a young age, but I feel like it's evolved in terms of like what I've been confident about. Um, meaning like I've always had a sense of confidence, right? But when I was a kid, I was like always super duper fucking smart, and my no matter what I had going on in life, because I knew I was so smart and I would always figure shit out and make sure like I get myself out of whatever situation I'm in. I was always just, like, I had a high self love. So I never necessarily felt the need to follow other people. And like, right. because I was confident, I was confident in my, in, in my intelligence. Um, right. When I got, you know, when you get older and you're like, you know, become vain and shit, you know, you get into like your late teens, early twenties and you're part, you know, then it was like looks, you, got you know, it. Got, it was like confident looks. And then obviously boxing gives you a, I mean, sports in general build a different kind of confidence, but right. combat sports, it's, I mean, you know, it's, it's the type of confidence you get from just knowing that no, it's no one in that fucking ring but you. It don't matter right. what the fuck your coach say. It don't matter what he tells you, what he told you. At the end of the day, when that bell rings, it is just you. It's your brain and everything else, right? So, like, when you know you can be in that ring and you can stay calm, 
and a motherfucker is like coming at you trying to take your head off and you just say, hey, you know, and you just stick into your game plan. That shit, like, come on now. You know when you walk out the fucking gym after some good sparring, you're like, oh, you'll be ready to talk shit on the street. Man. Like, it's like you know, yo, you know that feeling. You know that uh, feeling. It's, it's, it's such a it's feeling. such an empowering feeling. It's the it's the feeling of like yo, any noise, anything that's out of his jurisdiction doesn't phase me. I'm comfortable on any Martin Luther. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like you just like you just move differently, and then you do enough of that shit. It's, it's like, like it's, it's in, in the most it's chaotic nice. scene. You're just kind of like dismantling yeah. it in your head. Like this is this is all something I've seen before. Like, and and on top of that, it also instills a tremendous amount of discipline, right? So you know not to react, which is why you stay calm. Because it's like your first, your ego just shuts the fuck up. Like it teaches you how to not listen to your ego and humble yourself and learn your fucking craft. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, it's a beautiful thing, man. It's a martial art, yeah. and that's one of the benefits yeah, yeah. of it. Of it. Fine, and, right? and we talk about how, um, like boxing and that that confidence that it, it instills, that's applicable, uh, that's applicable in every area in your life. I mean, that could be applied to your music, to your relationship, mm -hmm. what you're really willing to tolerate in any relationship, whether it be with a loved one, a family member, it's just like, it's across the board. Exactly. I want to put, the reason I wasn't um, being rude, looking down when you were talking, I was just no, snapshotting this picture of you, which I think is adorable. And I want to I want to know a little history on it. That's a picture of you, right? <laughs> so I want that, so that's what I was doing. My bad. I was looking down while you were talking about. I just wanted to pull this up without pausing. But so how old were you there? Damn, I think like three, maybe. Yo, mad right? cute. Yo, yo Wait, but you look very like naughty. Oh, I was like, I, trust me, trust me. I was very, but not like I'm like how I am now. I was, you know, I was always curious, a curious. Yeah, Damn, this is the another one. This is Vex Money. Is this the newest one? Nah, that was from, that was like my Valentine's Day one. That was before Spring Gator. Uh, yeah. yeah, a couple of the tracks I listened to were fire. I mean, Welcome to America is banging. I mean, uh, Birthday Gator is definitely a highlight. Star shit. is dope. It's smart and insightful shit, man. So what's the Thank plan? You. Are you um just putting out music? And this in abundance, are you reaching out to anyone in particular? Like what's the, or are you just creating and you feel good doing that? What's like? Um, The ultimate, ultimate, ultimate end all goal is some form of political power. Um, She's trying to be school chancellor. Look, or senator something. That's the ultimate goal. Um, but this a, a million amount of steps I got to take in order to acquire a certain position of power. Um, I was given certain attributes with my writing, rapping, um, boxing, and just who I am as a person innately. I think all of these things are going to contribute to where I need to be on down the line. With that being said, um, like you, you, when you listen to my rap, there's a lot of philosophy in it, but it ain't like, it ain't no nerd shit. It's like hood but like shit is so fun. It's like how I'm talking to you right now, and I have to drop some gems. Right, but like, you're and not that's what I like about it. You know, it's one of, another thing. It's just like that's not easy to do. And I'm gonna let you finish your point, but before I get mine, because I'm older than you, and I'm forget. <laughs> but like that's the beauty in the art that you do. And like if I'm doing stand up, right, when I'm on stage, intertwining my personality with the with the work that I put mm -hmm. together, meaning the jokes I put together, and piecing that together and allowing the field to be like, oh, this motherfucker just sounds like a friend bugging out on stage. It doesn't feel like, oh, this is the art and this is me and this is my art for you guys. No, it's like, when you can it's just like with your personality. You. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like, that's, I and that's like what I, that. I like that about your comedy too. I mean, and a lot of comedians, not, not every comedian does it, but like for me, at least the comedians I tend to gravitate to, are the ones that are like, they just talk, they just, it's like I'm talking to my homie, right, listening to my right, homie right. crack. And, and that's what I got, that, that, that's the feeling I got from your music too. It definitely sounds and feels like you. You know, like, you know, you ever listen to like something like, yeah, I mean, I get it, but it doesn't sound like it that person. Not, it doesn't sound like their really. voice. It was like when Nas did Uchiwali. Yes. That's, that shit was, you know. And, 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 and Nas did a lot of that. He always kind of wavered back and forth. Shorty, same with Shimfrey. Yeah. I did yeah. like that one. 
I didn't mind that one, but it didn't sound like it, it wasn't, it wasn't his best song. Yeah, I, I'm gonna say this. I, I, I like them. You know what song I hated? I know this is like off topic, but just because no, it's fine, man. We do, we do, we do all that. I hated "Hate Me Now." I fucking hate, and I think I. Oh hated my god, it I'm getting song. goosebumps because I hate that fucking song. It is the worst, in my opinion, the worst Nas song That's ever. That's why I fucks with you, ever. Aida. That's why I fucks ever. with you. Yo, I hate Nas because of that song. First of all, Diddy, you remember the video when the motherfucker yes, was on the face? It was so whack. It was oh, okay, okay, okay. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bash it one time. You bash it one time. We jump in this there shit. We go. Okay. There one, we go. the fact is, Tupac probably died like three years before that. The way Nas got the tattoo on his belly, Godson. It was like the, the same text, the same like, oh, uh, what's the word I'm the looking stuff, for? Like everything, the same font, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, it, it was like around the stomach, that, and it was like in the same font. Same position, like, yeah, everything. Yo, and then he had like a tattoo on his forearm that said Destiny, and it was like the 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 Outlaws tattoo, yeah. that too. Yeah, there was a lot of things. I was like, dude, it's okay to be inspired by somebody, but he wanted, he was so influenced by Tupac at that point. The way he like wore his fit, the, the, the outfit. Um, the bandana, he had the bandana. Oh, like, so wack. Tied in the front, yeah. It was cringy. Um, the music video for Hate Me Now was so overproduced. And the fucking, he was on a crucifix. Remember that shit? Oh. Cause you remember, wasn't that like um around the time when uh when when Diddy and had the the trial right with J Lo and shit, and he felt like everybody was crucifying. I feel it was like it was like some shit that he was trying to prove with the crucifixion, and I think it came out around that same time when he got. When he finally got off from the the, the the shooting up the club shit. Yeah, yeah. Which yeah, which by the way, I mean, Shine n- never recovered from that. Have you seen Shine? Yo, he's like a has- Hasidic Jew. He thinks he's slow mo from Borough Park, Brooklyn. Right? This is the fuck. <laughs> we having the, the now police. We having these shit Talking right about here. yeah, I, I still want to get it. You know, I'm still trying to make some music. The crazy no shit. Find that shit. He's in Belize, dressed as Mr. Nachman, Finkelstein. I'm going to give, I'm going to cut Shine a little bit of slack only because he's just, I know what he's trying to assimilate to, right? Because he's trying to do the whole black Hebrew thing. The problem is the, the Hasidic Jews are not the same as the Hebrews. And that, first of all, I'm going to give you a real quick history. They're called Jewish people, right? Not Jew. They're Jewish. I S H is a suffix that means like. It does not mean that you are something. If I say you're behaving childish, I'm not calling you a child. I mean, you are behaving like a child. The reason they are called Jewish, they descended from the Khazarian Empire. And when, during like the, the religious wars, they didn't want to convert to Islam or, or Christianity. So they learned Judaism and converted to Judaism, but they knew that they were not actual Hebrews. They are not the people of the Bible, which is why they refer to themselves as Jewish. The actual true people, the Hebrews of the Bible, are black people, the lost tribe, all melanated people, black, Latino, that's a whole other conversation. And I think that's what Shine was trying to get to. He just is not, he's on the surface of it. Yeah, just trying to yeah. help him out. So if, if Shine somehow sees this video, just do a little more research, baby. I love you. Yeah, yeah. No, it, it definitely, he seemed conflicted with himself, where he wants to do his life, his way of life. I mean, he wants knowledge. He wants a sense of purpose and he wants to be yeah. filled. He wants to fill in the void. But he just seemed all over the place. He seemed crazy. He seemed nuts. Yeah, but I mean, but he was locked up for like ten years, right? Yeah, he was locked up for ten years. Got deported back to Belize. To Belize, yeah. So he was, he did, and he was nineteen. So he did a. He was young, man. So you know, you're talking about formative years. His entire twenties, he was locked up. That's crazy. It it was wild. But yeah, so I guess, and you know, I love Nas, but we're going back to that. It's just like he, um. It, it was just to see that with a magnifying glass, and and it was so out there. It was like it, 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 his his artistic expression seemed so compromised by other influences. I think he was just not himself, and I think he re, he, mom, he rediscovered was, it later. Fairness, his mom, I think, passed away around that time, if I'm not mistaken. And yeah, he might have been on. He might have been on some bullshit or not. Yeah, and you know what? That, we all we all are, but the only thing was were well, artists. That everyone's listening to it, right? So it's a lot more amplified. I don't put, a, I ain't gonna put out no bullshit. I'm just saying. But yeah, I feel. You. Yeah, you know, listen. I'll get. This is the thing. If it's bullshit, 
but it's your own work. Like, let's say it's bullshit, but it's like something you tried and it's really creative, but it just doesn't work. I'll give that yeah. a little more props. But this just seemed like, oh, it's a representation. <laughs> yeah, that was like people. industry. It was industry. It was super industry yeah. push. Yeah, yeah. And he did a lot of things like that, and which makes me believe that he didn't have like a lot of creative control. Like even the firm, when they that collection, did you like the firm? Yeah. Like, like, it was, come on, you have powerhouses, you had Foxy, Nature, yeah. and, and, and then it didn't gel together because they said you gotta keep it super mafioso, like, and yeah. a lot of the rappers were doing that during that time. So it didn't, it didn't hit. I mean, how you have like an all-star, I wouldn't say all-star lineup, that's big, but Dr. But Dre like, produced like that a, shit. Like a, it, was, it was an all-star lineup by like real rap standards, right? Not necessarily. Right. Like I mean, Dr. Dre like produced like, that shit. How that shit didn't gel together? And, and it's just that. There's too, there's too many heads and too many hands on the project rather than being an authentic thing from here. From it, this is one of those cases where it was too many chiefs and not enough Indians. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. But, um, That's exactly right. Yeah, but um, Nas has put out a lot of work. I think he redeemed himself. I yeah, because what was like the album? Because the album after that was still Matic, I think, right? If I'm not mistaken, I think yeah. After Nostradamus was still Matic. Yeah, that was that shit was a banger. Yeah, that was beyond a banger. And I'm just gonna plug still Matic. Wait, can you see me? Am I still clear? Enough no, you're good. You're good. Okay. Still Matic. Sorry, I was trying to fix my so. Still Matic, one of the greatest hip hop albums of all fucking time. I love that Ether. album. Ether, Ether is the greatest di- no you know what let me hit him up is the greatest best record of all time and that's only because like Tupac like meant it <laughs> right. like like this man thought that Biggie tried to kill him so he was like right, super right, right, angry right. And he was, like, so like yeah. you felt that it was shit. just such raw emotion and you could tell it was just like that. yeah it was like he went to the studio and he did it that day it was like a recording of his thoughts right then and there it just so happens that he was able to fuck ride it on a beat. Fuck Jay Z. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember that? You want to be yeah. damn bad with him? Fuck. Remember that? Remember that? Yo, I'm not gonna. I know I shouldn't say this line, but it's one of my favorite lines, and it's fucked up. But it's a song. It's Tupac said it, not me. <laughs> it's like my beat. No one of you niggas got sickle cell. Yeah, <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah. That was fucked up. But that shit was funny as hell. I'm not yeah, no, it was, it was, it was hard. It was hard, man. And no one was doing things like that. A lot of like this. And that shit was like. Well, it was ad lib too. Like he didn't go into the studio and say, "I'm gonna say that." He was on the mic, you know, and he yeah. was just ad libbing. And Tupac did a lot talking. of that. Yeah, he was that. just talking. And then what I loved about that song too was like he put all of his the, like his young boys on. Yeah, it was like I yes. thought that shit was so fucking dope. Yeah, because I actually um see I'm a huge Tupac fan, so I don't know. If oh, you're me too. So because so you was an outlaw fan too, right? Because like yes. after that track, yes. I was like, "Ooh, Gaddafi." Yes. You know what I mean? And I just started looking up and I fell in love with that group. One of my favorite fucking albums, Still I Rise. I think that's the one that- That's a great Still album. The, 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 um, that's, that's a good album. Yeah. The only thing is, Tupac being the general, he was able to bring out the best in them because he brought the standards were up here and he, he instilled discipline. He was like, you know, we don't have yeah. the time or the luxury. We're going to go in the studio and lay this down. And he would do it in a competitive way where it was like, I spit my verse, you lay that, and, and whoever's there, ready to do it. And some of them, yeah. you know, weren't at the studio. So he always had this element of like, yo, you're either in or you're out. We're not waiting. We got to press this music together. Because he had this feeling like he, he, he was going to die. Was limited. He had a lot yeah. of shit that you and, know. and like, you know what's all the tracks, that there's a song that only avid listeners like you and I will know. But it's a song called "You Don't Have to Worry," and it's yep. on the, the "Until the End of Time" album. You remember that song? I mean, they're talking about Tupac. They're they're on the same song as Tupac, but it's after his death. So that yeah, they recorded after. Yeah, so the verses are relevant towards him dying. Like you know, they yeah. Oh man, it just gives me goosebumps. Like it was those guys were really. Um, moved and inspired very talented. by Tupac. Very talented. Unfortunately, independently, they didn't. None of them, I don't think, really did too much. Well, didn't um, if I'm noble. not mistaken, then one of them passed, right? What's his name? I A think couple of them passed. 
Qaddafi. Qaddafi, Qaddafi, yeah. Yeah, he got killed in Newark shortly after Tupac. And then um, one of them died in a car well, accident. Not dirt, well, Jersey is full of dirt bands. I'm yeah, not Newark, kidding. New Jersey. I mean. That is the ghetto. Yeah, Newark. So, and then uh, Fatal Hussein got killed in a car accident recently. Hussein. I used to fucking love him, boy. I, I mean, he did have, a, in the, he did have a, a, an album out that was really independent. But the, it, it, the quality of it is very poor. Yeah. But I think but, you know um, why though, because I think if I'm not mistaken, I think because they used to, they always recorded in the same studio in in Jersey. I think right. Maybe, I don't think they yeah. ever really recorded in like the actual like like a big studio. I feel like they just had like you know they home whoever the producer was. Yeah, that's what it worked. sounded like. Um, but I, I wasn't crazy about that solo project. But I will say this, man. I mean, you want to talk about albums that move you, inspire you, and are recording at the time. That's the way. That's what Tupac All Eyes on Me. Did for me, man. That's a yo first uh, double like rap my, CD. Are we the same person right now. I don't I know, so I, I think we just know no. good shit. Listen, you know what's so crazy? While you were talking about Nas and like biting Tupac, you know what just kept going through my head? The beat for Street Dreams, because you remember that was Tupac. All eyes on me. <laughs> All eyes on me. I will say this though. Tupac had a, a, a song on Machiavelli, um, Me and My Girlfriend, and it was very... One of my favorite, that's actually my favorite song of the album. Yeah. Shit. I, I, hate, I hate it when Beyonce, uh, when Jay-Z and Beyonce... Jay-Z and Beyonce, no, I, yo, we're in the same boat. First of all, I hate them, but yes. At first, ah, we're in the same boat. Same fucking boat. I was but so it's, just, it's just very blatant and, you know... And, and they made Don't like monster Tupac. hits out of these these things. And Tupac did not like them, at least uh, you know, to his, the day he passed. And and the thing is that we yeah, saw like a wave, we saw a wave of Tupac's influence in the industry with East Coast rappers. And you know, Pac came from the East Coast, but we saw Ja Rule. Born in Brooklyn, right yeah. in Baltimore. Yep, DMX yeah. took a little. Bit I mean, here. You, it was so whack. It was so whack. And I think that was the turning point. To New York rappers losing their identity, you know, like we had, they had, you know, New York rappers had a fucking identity, you know. We had, we had um, Wu Tang Clan, we had a uh, boot camp, we had uh, every Chuck borough, West. every borough, every borough had their own. Oh style. shit! So when this East Coast West Coast thing went on, a lot of these guys try to be like Pac, and then it went down south, and down south, you know. It was a mess, but isn't that how it happened? Like the South then was like, the, we need to jump in music. The South stick together, but real yeah. quick, you know what's so funny? 50 had a song, Um, was my, uh, was a broke nigga, or was a rich nigga, and he said, New York niggas copy niggas like it's all good. And yeah. that shit always stood out to me. It was yeah. like, y'all, it's insane. Like you birthed this shit. Like I was telling somebody the other day, Cause they was like, why you don't, be, why you don't be doing like the trap shit? Like, I actually got like a couple trap songs, like I'll do once in a while, just cause, like, whatever. Like, I be having fun, and I know you gotta give everybody something. Mm -hmm. But for me, it's like I'm always gonna be so New York, and I'm looking at it like New York mothered this. Why would a mother try to be like her child? You know I mean, the child's supposed to want to be like the mother, and I always say that shit. So I would never like. If you're gonna tell me I'm gonna give you two beats and you gotta choose, of course I'm gonna choose the boom bap every single fucking time. Yeah. Every yeah. fucking time. Yeah, every no, time. New York definitely lost his way and never recovered from it, really. You know, never recovered. No, because like because after that, right? Like, cause even Jay started to go commercial, like once um, like after what was that? After what was the one that had um hard knock life? Because that was like his very first like crossover. And once he had that crossover. Was a, it, that shit went downhill. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. You, we were talking was about cool, the like, black album. How everyone was like, that was like his retirement album. But I wasn't crazy sucked. about that. Yeah, I didn't that like that one. Sucked. Every album after Blueprint sucked. Every fucking Blueprint album. was a classic. But yeah, Blueprint I wasn't. Was the last Jay Z album where I could listen to from the beginning to the end. No, yeah, that was an important me. album. Who produced a lot of that? Was it Kanye and um, Just Blaze? Yeah, no, there was someone Blaze. else. There was someone else that was very prominent on that album. Um, well, I know Kanye did my favorite track on there. No, it was Kanye and it was Just Blaze. I feel like there was someone else that was very, shit, that had a very yeah, distinct you know what I can't, You're right. I'm gonna have to look that up. We'll have to but look that, that up. That was, 
That was the album. But after that, because oh yeah, not, it was was it black that was after Blueprint or was it? It was right black, the black album. No, think, the black album dropped after that. I think after okay. So matter of fact, Reasonable Doubt, greatest J album in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Let me just, um, let me keep on talking. I'm just gonna look that up real quick. But uh, uh, the next one was in my lifetime volume two was dope and volume three was dope then he had um the the was it the dynasty or the rock or something that it was like the, the album the cover was black and white i think it was the dynasty that shit sucked yeah he t- he okay back- so it was um reasonable doubt in my lifetime volume one hard knock volume two i'm oh, sorry volume two hard knock life volume three the dynasty the blueprint and okay. then the blueprint two that was whack. Oh, he did do a blueprint two. That right? was a That's flop. Like, yeah. Every, and then the, then it was the black every, album. And then Kingdom Come. Yeah, he slowed down a bit. <laughs> Yo, and then I'm gonna be real. Then the album after that, the one he did with Kanye, sucked because he was on it. If it was just Kanye, would have been a great album. Yo, I love Kanye though, and this is the thing. That's my boo. Yeah, I like Kanye. I mean, I mean, I love his music, and I, so I. What you know? What, by liking someone like that, I realized I can separate someone's idiot bullshit to, as a, uh, with their art. Like I can separate. Mm-hmm. Like your art is a gift, and you gave me a gift, and I appreciate your gift. And dog, yes. I'm running with your gift. I'm gonna share your gift like you shared it with me. I purchased it, but I'm sharing. It. I love your gift. It moves me. It's the background, some beautiful and hard times in my life. But that's it. I don't have to look at him as a person and be like, oh, worried about um, what his politics are, what he said about this. I'm listening to the music. I'm totally able yeah. to separate the two. I mean, that's the one artist that kind of gave me that revelation. I'm like, yeah, I don't, that you know, all the antics outside of it. I love his music. I am like it's crazy to say because I'm I'm with you, brother. Kanye, I think is a musical genius. I'm gonna always say that, especially production. I, he's one of my favorite producers of all fucking time. I think he's he has amazing. every fucking right, every right to be arrogant, to be cop. I'm 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 fine with that shit. I don't like he's supposed to be. Um, I personally can't separate the artist from the music just because like I'm so true to my shit, so I hold every artist to the same standard. Um, and I and I feel like the old Kanye, right? Like uh college dropout um what was the one after that graduation day um and then the third album i think was it my dark fantasy or whatever that was that was my that, favorite like, that was whew, whew, he that came up, but i mean come on to put elements like i mean he, that, he had he had he had red corn on that album rizza i mean just peppering that and lyrically I mean, everything about that. That's a, that's a, everything, uh, that was everything that's about that album. Kanye. That was my favorite Kanye album, actually. Twisted yeah, me Fantasy. too. Me too. Um, but just like he was, I like I just loved him as an artist, and I loved everything he was standing for. Like, yeah, he was cocky. He had a lot. He had his issues and shit. But he was like, he was for the fans, right? He was for hip hop music, and he was for the culture, which I love. Fast forward, whatever. I, I get it. People got to make money. You got to feed your family, or you around certain people, and. You know, you're trying to like socially climb. So you got to acquiesce a little bit. You got to switch it up. Respectable. But after that, I never really, I don't know, like his music wasn't the same. For, in my opinion, mm-hmm. I feel like. After, so after, like dark, after Dark Fantasy. Yeah. But then yeah. I, w- I would say this, the, the album with Jay-Z, what was that? Um, Whatever the fuck that album was called. What was it? Magna Carta. If, right? That was Magna Carta, right? I think. Or Wait, Holy the Grail. one that they did together? Yeah. What was that called? Uh, I, it's not, no. Uh, Holy no, shit. Well, you know what? Whatever that. Joke, I know what you're talking about. I swear to you, I'll pull it if up. that if that was only Kanye, that would have been a dope fucking album. Because Kanye, every Kanye verse was beautiful. All the tracks that he produced, like, because I remember reading that the two of them, Jay Z didn't the want to give. Up, watch the throne. There we go. Jay Z didn't want to give up full control, so he made Kanye give him fifty percent of like the the control over the production and shit, which is why the shit was trash. If Kanye had full one hundred percent control of that production. Would have been a different album. Yeah, I wouldn't challenge Kanye with that. Jay Z picking out the beats. I'll be like, yo, Kanye, yes. do all the production. But you know, it's ego, right? So yeah, I can only imagine. Shit, I can only imagine with those two. I know. So, well, as Jay, far as like, like production a... with you, uh, do you have a lot of uh, 
a guy's producing or do you fuck with like one producer or like a, what's the network behind that and how do you find a producer um my I, I i have definitely one main producer shout out to my boy sean reckless he does a he did we did the the reckless gator tape um i love him because he just thing? yeah he oh. and he's on like i i always use his i always make sure i have one of his beats on every single um ep of mine just that's like the homie and we mesh well we like 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 primo and jigger or like primo and guru I mean, we yeah, like, where's, uh, where's he from? Snoop. He, the crazy shit is, he's from Atlanta, but he got like the New York style when it comes to beat, because whatever, like New York, we mother this shit. Yeah. So the, the insane thing is like everybody in Atlanta around him, they always want trap beats, trap beats, blah, blah, blah. blah. So when, how, I forget, we had like a mutual acquaintance that uh, rapped also. And um, so me and him ended up becoming cool just because like, basically my style was meant for his beats and vice versa. His beats were meant for my style. Um, and it's crazy because now, like, a lot of people just hit him up all the fucking time for his beats, I guess, because we really just started this shit from the ground up. But aside from him, it's whatever. Like, I'll buy beats or sometimes people just send me beats. I'm very, very independent. I don't like working specifically with... He's the only producer I work with like that. Everybody... I don't work with producers because I like control of my shit. Yeah, um, yeah. And a lot of producers... And I, and, I, and I respect producers, too. That's an art itself, right? Um, so they also have a vision for certain things. Me, I'm an energy-based person. If I meet you and we don't really, if my personality don't really mesh with your personality, eh, I don't necessarily want to work with you. Like, I'm very, very true to myself. And once again, I'm super duper uh, uh, opinionated, I guess. So, like, if I see a record one way, like, you can't tell me you want the shit another way. Like, right. so, so either how, you send me the beat and I... Re- so how, that- would, how, how would something like that go? If, um, if you got three verses... Yeah. Maybe not the hook yet or whatever. Maybe you guys work on the hook and he has a beat. What what would a producer, what what, what has uh, been a situation where you bump heads? Like, what might a, a producer ask you that you're like, nah, I don't know. I got like, like, is it the feel of this? Like, is it lyrically they want you to change things or is it a tempo of your flow? Like, what is it? Or it could be anything. It could be, it could be, it could be anything. Um, Generally, producers, they, they, like conceptually, right? They'll have a song, they'll have a beat, and they'll be like, this is like, you know, I got a concept for this beat. If I like the concept, like, I'll write to it, right? But if it's like, if it's not up my alley, I'm not gonna fuck with it. But, or sometimes it'll be like, when you're recording, they'll be like, oh, like, do a double here, here, here. And I'm like, nah, I don't, me, I'm like, nah, I don't like the double here, here, here. Like, so we might argue. Well, well, what's a double? Like, like, saying the same word? Yeah, yeah. So like, when you rap a verse, and then like, you re-record, and you like, emphasize certain things. So like, when I'm writing, I have a certain sound in my head already. Um, but obviously when they're, you know, producing, you know, producers hear different things. So like I said, I do respect it, but in the same token, you all you you already gave me the completed beat. So as far as I'm concerned, when I'm writing, like every everything else is up to me. So if I'm writing and I'm writing this shit a certain way, I gotta say it a certain way. So for you to come and tell me like, nah, nah, I don't say it like that, it's not gonna happen. You say that shit for somebody else. Yeah. But in all fairness, I'm very upfront about that too. Like I don't like when people ask me to work to, like like oh I got a beat for you, blah blah blah. The first thing I'm like, like, do you have a concept? Is it like something that you're trying to do specifically or can I have free reign? Second, they say you could do whatever you want, cool. But then there's people that, like I said, they might have a certain concept and I might agree with it, I might not, depends. But I'm generally pretty, pretty independent when it comes to like beat selection and that. Yeah. I, I'm like really impressed by your volume of work in one year. And that's dope, man, because it's just like, that shit is out there. It's like, you got a bodies of work. Bang, bang, yeah. bang. Really good shit. Do you have, do you have a, as to... a boxing fan and as a boxer, do you, I, I don't feel like I've heard, maybe in one song, there were some boxing references. There were. What song was it? Was Zab um, Judah? Was there one with a Zab Judah reference? I'm like, yeah, I, I, that was on the Gator Tapes, I think, right? Maybe um, I just I I've listened to so much. Of it. I, I have like every now and then like this is a couple like I'll throw in like references. I feel like I do have certain references. My, maybe not necessarily to boxers, but to like like certain boxing, like just things that only boxers would know. Like I feel like if you listen to certain things, you'll hear it. Like a matter of fact, I did like a um. I remember I did a one of those like the freestyle challenges. Like I think it was like last week or the week before, and I think the line was like, "No matter how you fight, box brawl," like. Only a boxer will understand what I'm yeah, like. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, the difference between, you know what I mean? It's like, is the difference between boxing and brawl. Like everybody, you know, if you don't know boxing, you're just going to think boxing is throwing punches and fighting. If, if you know boxing, you know boxing is, you know that shit ain't going to win a fight. You get in a fucking ring and you come in there and you in there with a boxer, 
that motherfucker gonna make you like come on man. Yeah, yeah. That's but you know what you know the difference between the two. So right, 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 right. Have you heard of a guy? He's a pro boxer. I just came across his uh, profile. I believe and he had a he he's a, he raps too. I, I think it's Dave Flat Sparks. Yo, I see. I've seen. I don't know him personally, but a couple of my homies um in the game know him. Yeah, it's just, it's boxing is a small community. Like we all know, you know, there a lot of yeah, people know each other. Everybody knows it. Yeah. Um, yeah so I came across like one of his freestyles, and it was about the year of boxing, like 2019, and it was oh, dope. Yeah, it was dope, man. And I, you know, I don't know him. I, I, I never heard of. Uh, I mean, the name sounds familiar, but I saw a clip, and I was like, that was pretty fly. Like he blew out every fight of 2000, or maybe it was. Oh, that's dope. It was a breakdown of fights, though, and it was it was pretty clever. It was pretty dope. And if you're a boxing fan, you love that shit. You know what I'm saying? Well, that's cool. I'm gonna check it out. I remember I've seen like people have shared clips, but it wasn't like it was just like regular rap shit. It wasn't um boxing related. He, yeah, he no, that rap, one, bro. it was the one that caught my eye. That's dope. Yeah, yeah. Listen, man. I, I miss boxing. Um, Yo. And, you know, it's funny, even like, <laughs> you know, we, we'll get it and it come back, but I miss it. Me and you have Yo. love boxing. I was looking forward, because we only a few days from May. I was legitimately looking forward to my boy, Teofimo Lopez, putting, and, I, and I'm going to say this, Putting the chicken fixings on Lomachenko. I will bet any what, and every one of y'all. Was that, was that a done deal? That was a done deal. It was signed. Oh, oh, I didn't know that was a done deal. Done deal. It was supposed to be in May. Wow. That's not going to go down. Fuck. Not in May. Oh. Not tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. That, yo, what, what, you, what, you want, what you think about Lopez, though? You know what? I'll be honest with you. I don't know too much about him. I know his highlight reel, and that shit is impressive. But I don't know him as a, a a fighter I follow from beginning to end. I never really watched full fights from him. I see a highlight reel that's super yeah. fucking impressive. The kid, he, he, yeah, he, he looks like he got power in both hands. If I'm not and mistaken, he, he does switch from orthodox to southpaw. Or yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. Yeah, 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 I mean, a lot of people are not it's fans of that. I like it, especially if we can pull it off. Um, the dude. I do it. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm southpaw, but I'll switch. i switch up. Yeah, I mean it's fun. It's if, fun. You know, you know, it, 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 if if it's you're fun. comfortable doing it in spot and you can defend from that position, more power to you. The one guy who I see who really pulls it off on a pro level is Terrence Andre Crawford. Ward. Andre Ward, Terrence yeah. Crawford. And you Terrence know who Crawford is probably like is like a probably legit southpaw, and he and fights he orthodox, but he he's nasty with it both ways. You you know who? Because I'm south. You know who inspired me to to do the switching ship? A lot of people don't, you probably won't even realize it until you, I guarantee you're going to go back and watch the fights now. Marvin Hagler, if you actually study his fights, he always switched. He always put himself in different positions, whether it was orthodox or southpaw, just to get punches off. He was so, I think because people, we always like classify him as like, like that slugger, boxer, puncher shit. And we don't really, really, really like analyze like his boxing. Like he was very, very technical. It was a lot of like certain nuances that you, when you yeah. really watch him, it's like, oh, this motherfucker understood the sweet science, like legit. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For but sure. um, yeah, if, if you if you go back and watch any of his fights and you just watch his feet, you'll see he always switched up. But he did a very, very. I didn't like, know that. I, I gotta, yeah, I gotta keep subtle. an eye on that. Very, I gotta keep an eye subtle. on that. I always thought of him as a sub. I don't remember ever seeing him switch. But now I can kind of go into the archives and look at and look for that. Yeah, That's, you'll catch it. One, you, he's my favorite. You, definitely one of my favorites. Yeah, you know, uh, he's one of my favorites too, but I didn't notice that. So you, that, that's a good point that you're making. Uh, uh, you know, if if he did that, it, it it makes a lot of sense because um, he um he be some of the best, and it, it, you yeah. know, he wasn't known for that, but obviously, man, he had to have th those skills to, to beat th th those people. It just wasn't slugging, but damn sure. Yeah. You know, yeah. you know, who's another guy. I mean, he's get he's given his credit. But there's some subtle things about him. Um, it's like uh, Duran. Duran, yeah. Yeah. I mean, everything was like an X. Like, he punched yeah, and put he under something else, go under something. You know, he would punch to the body, go under something. I mean. he had, Yo, he had great, you know, it's, it's that core, right? The core and, like, the, the, the waist control. And he understood how to, like, he literally would just move here. You're right. And then come here. 
Yeah. Every move he did had it was a reason for it. He didn't just yeah. do the shit just to like do it, which right. was super dope. Right. Right. He always put himself like if if he was offensive, there was something defensive. And why he was doing something offensive, he was gonna add something. He would else. do something. It was a a magnificent. He was a magnificent fighter. No, he was a yeah. That damn yeah. That was. I mean, that, after that whole um sugar race shit, that was crazy. But yeah, he was a. I know that, oh, that whole so, order, when he quit in that, that, that second fight. He they, a lot of people would say that he shit his pants. He said that he just got frustrated and you know. Yeah, um, I, mean, I don't know. I would have, I would have went with the fact I shit my pants, dog. That's <laughs> you quit, like I mean, he quit, it, right? But I felt like at that age it was kind of like fuck it, because I mean, even remember even when um when, when Hagler lost to Leonard, Hagler just had that attitude like, like fuck it. At this point, fuck y'all, like. Y'all took forever to have this shit happen. Fuck you. Yeah, so. that's the thing, man. H Hagler got, he didn't get the same breaks as no. uh, Sugar Ray. And because Sugar Ray had a certain look, he was the Olympian, you know. Yeah, he was he was the Oscar de la Hoya of his time. Exactly. That's exactly right. And, you know, everything yeah, from the way quick. he looked to the way he conducted real himself. Quick. That was what was so dope about Roberto Durant was like, because, like, basically, Sugar Ray Leonard represented America, right? Like, what? the U.S. is to the rest of the world. And the Ram used to come in that month. Remember, remember when they did that interview and he refused to speak English? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. You got, I, this shit got to be somewhere on YouTube. It was an interview the Ram did and his motherfucker was like, fuck your English. And he only did it because because it was a, it was during the promotion for the Ray Leonard fight and he would not speak to any American in English on purpose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was on some fuck America shit. I yeah, mean, well, that first him. fight, man, I mean, he, um, he got mind control over Sugar Ray Leonard and he took his heart. He, he, he took Sugar Ray's heart, man. Like, he intimidated him, and he won mm -hmm. that fight off of sheer intimidation. And he was like, you know, it was like, I'm going to take your heart. I'm going to dish your woman. I'm going to take your manhood. I'm going to take yeah, everything. he was saying some nasty yeah. shit. And Sugar Ray, Sugar Ray <laughs> Leonard didn't have his head on right for that fight. Yo, you know who talked like Roberto, Roberto Duran fights? Mayorga. <laughs> like, right, except he doesn't have the same skill. Yeah, but like I'm just saying, like if Roberto Durant, if it's like words were fights, like Mayorga would like basically speak like Roberto Durant. <laughs> Yo, Mayorga was fun to watch. <laughs> he was a supreme yeah. dirtbag. Well, he just comes to die, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, he leaves every fight looking like a chow chow. His face is just like. You know who else is like that? That I like. What's his name? Um, Bam Bam, Rios. Yeah. He come to fight. Too. He just fights. You don't give a fuck. Every yeah, and, uh, yeah, Sean, but... Sean Porter too. Sean Porter come to fight every fight. But Sean Porter's a little more. Um, he's a smarter guy. <laughs> yeah, he's skillful. He knows how to box. Yeah, he's a, yeah, he's he's smarter. I mean, and he doesn't take the shots they take, man. Huh. Because he's not Spanish. <laughs> yeah, for real. But he like Brand, Brandon uh, Rios. I mean, well, Yo, Alvarado. Remember those wars? Oh, those wars were almost like similar to Arturo Gotti and, and Mickey Ward, Alvarado and Bam yeah. Bam Rios. Like those are classic scraps. Yeah, because that's actually that's those are the ones. Those are the fights that made me a fan of um, Bam Bam. So good. Yeah, man. I like Even to fight, fought, man. Um, I want to fight. Pacquiao. The more you fought Pacquiao, that was a good fight too, though. Yeah, I mean, it was a good fight for Pacquiao. Pacquiao was like, man, he was working a heavy bag. Bang, bang, bang. <laughs> no, that but I mean, he came, he came to fight, though, which I, love. I always love. Yeah, I yeah, love yeah. He, the dude got fight. heart. And, you know, I, I mean, I think he just stuck he stuck around too long. I don't think he should be fighting anymore. You know, he's... He, you know, he, 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 he got stretched out by Danny Garcia. That was ugly off that counter right hand. Right? It was a counter right. That yes. Was ugly. Yo, Dan, I, yo, Angel Garcia, that's my homie. I would smoke weed with that motherfucker. Seriously. Yo, Angel Garcia like, yo, Danny! Danny! Yo, wake the fuck up! <laughs> He's like, yo, yo, I used to sell dummies in the street. I used to sell dummies in the street. <laughs> you remember when, when, when Danny fought Zab, right? And they had that press conference in Brooklyn. Every press Zab conference the... is hilarious with Angel Garcia. <laughs> and Zab had the, the rhinestone um, baseball cap and, and Angel was like, Take the motherfucking Janet Jackson head off. <laughs> Yo, yeah, hilarious. That was the funny. And then even Zab had to laugh. That shit was so fucking funny. 
That is fucking oh. funny. I forgot about that. I'm so happy you brought that up. That's so funny. He did say that. How about when um when Danny was gonna fight Thurman? He's like, okay, ponytail, <laughs> okay, ponytail. <laughs> yo, yo, he just you know he what, reduced yo. him to a ponytail. <laughs> hey, I'm ponytail. Hate Thurman. I hate Keith Thurman. But the thing with Angel, what I love is like, and I know a lot of people can't stand. He's obnoxious, but he loves his son. He, he loves, loves his son, son and he believes in his son. And that's like, you got to respect. It's like how I felt with like, even as annoying as like Mayweather's can be, both like Roger and, and Senior, they love Junior. And they yeah. both believe in Junior. And it's like, I respect that. You can't necessarily knock someone. Like he loves his fucking son, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and the father-son team don't generally, doesn't really work out. But no. in this case, uh, They, this they gel works. together well. Sean Port and his father do well together. And that's yeah, about it. Too. That's about it. And one of your favorite boxers for a long time, Miguel Cotto. He, I mean, he, um, his father and yeah. him weren't bad. They were good. They were good, but they remember Cotto used to fight him. Cotto used to fight every fucking trainer he has. But it's Yo, so that happened after he lost. After he lost his yeah. father, he had Emmanuel Stewart. He had the Cuban mm -hmm. guy. He had Freddie Roach. He ended his career with Freddie Roach. Right? He was yeah. he was switching trainers. Like you know why though, right? Because because he they everybody he got he got a big fucking head and super egotistical. Like he don't yeah, like probably. to listen to people. Yeah. Nah, yeah. that's like that was like what the word on the street was. It was like he don't yeah, like I can, to I can to totally people. see that. I can totally I mean, see but, that. You know I love Cotto, man. That motherfucker always like I never was ever, I was never disappointed in any Cotto fight. Yo, dog. He's another one. He always yeah. comes to fight. Yeah, always, always comes to fight. fight. He's a boxer puncher. He was vulnerable. That's nice. I mean, was a super safe. I mean, he went there, he cut, got cut. He will fight hurt. I mean, and there was always that element of like, never, he's- He never ducked anybody either, which I love. He never ducked anybody. That was my last point. They never fought for everybody in their prime. So he was a champion, bro. He was a boxer's boxer, dog. Like, you know, he didn't no, talk to shit even either. Floyd, remember even Mayweather had to give him respect and say, at first Mayweather said that was the hardest fight he ever had. And even before they fought, Mayweather was like, he he never respected the loss that Cotto had to, to um what's his name to Margarito. So Mayweather even viewed him as an undefeated fighter. I remember Floyd saying that shit. And I was like, I respect you, Floyd, for even saying that. Floyd viewed Miguel Cotto as undefeated before they fought. Well, yeah, I mean I was respectful. Miguel Cotto did lose before that though. He yeah, lost he, again. He, not, he lost to Margarito. That was the only No, he, he lost to Pacquiao too. He fought Pac and then he fight Pac after Floyd? Nah, no. you're right. Yeah, you're right. It was, no, it, and that, no, 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 but hold up. But Floyd didn't count that loss too, because Floyd was because which is true, because you remember that he had to squeeze down to 47. Yeah, remember yeah. Floyd went up to fight 54. So Floyd didn't count that loss either. Cause he was like, You made the man come down to 47. So I don't respect that loss. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. Was, and there was like, a lot of controversy surrounding Pacquiao during wanted, that time, juicing. Yeah. I mean, they all beat all right. They all do it. <laughs> they all fucking do. But not. Nah, but I respect Floyd because he went up to fight Cotto at fifty four. I thought that was respectable. I, I yeah. love Floyd. Like in the ring, I know people don't give him his props the way he needs to be given. But Floyd, that motherfucker been around for what over over two decades. And before De La Hoya, Floyd, I mean, he but he boxes. He he's another guy. Listen, like Kanye, there's a lot of shit outside the ring that I don't like. Is that is not my way of you know. Of, of seeing things. I agree with you there with but Floyd. his with boxing you. is an art. It's beautiful and it's a gift that he shared with us. And I love his boxing, but I'm separated. I don't like a lot of like, like the other Yo, shit. Floyd before before De La Hoya, right? Floyd people forgot Floyd wasn't always defensive. He got defensive later on. It was because of his hand. It wasn't because he was scared of anybody. Floyd used to fight. If you go back to all of the pretty boy Floyd fought. He fought Floyd, Corrales. He fought Emmanuel Augustus. He fought Castillo twice. Twice, yeah. I mean, you know that first fight, you know. Yeah, that was and, an L. And you know, but I gotta watch that fight. I might, I might treat myself to that fight tonight. Oh, the first one, right? When he, when they gave him the gift, but he won the second fight though. I give him that. But he fought everybody, and he actually fought. He was very offensive, right? Yeah. He got the hand. He had the hand issue. He beat De La Hoya. Once he beat De La Hoya, he became the cash cow. It was like, all right, I'm the cash cow. I'm calling the shots. But even when he was calling the shots, he was still fighting. My thing is with Floyd. I, I honest to God, feel that Floyd could beat anyone in the in, in not maybe not now, but like maybe like two years ago. 
I would have felt he could be anybody still at 47, even the Young Lions. The only thing is he would have actually had to have trained for them, which I don't think he wanted to do. I just don't think he felt like putting his body through that shit. Because yeah, um, he yeah. was boxing since she was like, what, three years old, I think? Yeah. Three or four, whatever. So that's like over 40, 40 years of boxing. 40 years Not of putting your body in the so, Yeah, it'd be whack if he came back out of retirement and then he lost against like an Errol Spence or something. That'd be so whack. Yeah. That would be whack. That, you know, that would even be fun to watch. Not, and you know, it's crazy because Spence was saying, Spence, Spence kind of called him out in a way when that interview he did a couple of days ago and he was just like, he said in his prime, he would be the Floyd Mayweather. <laughs> and I was like, eh, I don't know. Yeah, we don't even know how Errol Spence recovered from that, that yeah. accident. That was a, yeah, how the fuck did his car flip 12 times or something? That was insane, right? You know why, he, right? Because the Lamborghinis, they not built for like for the street. Them shit's a racing car. They, they yeah, built he didn't have a seatbelt on. They said I probably saved him. That's probably like, you never hear that shit. Listen, man, it's the safe belt. Oh, man. Boxing, man. It's funny. I, 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 we talk about, like, the fights of the past. and the, oh, I'm, I love boxing as much as I love music, where I could talk about a fight, and I remember where I was at that given time. I remember the smell of it. I remember yeah. the, the fans that were in the audience. And it was a lot, if I saw the fight live. Who, who do you think is your, um, the best boxing fan? What nationality? Who do you think is, like, the best? Oh, the fans? Um... I'm going to say, because because we're in New York, and I can't call yet. I would have to go to another fight and see. But it's between between Puerto Rico and Ireland. That's my two. My, <laughs> Yo, but the and, Irish are and, funny. And, because every time the guy gets hit, they go, the, the, ooh, naughty, ooh, naughty. Ole, oh. No, they do the ole, ole, yeah. ole, ole. Yo. I, I I would I I can't tell I don't know who you remember did you go to the um the, the Serrano and Hardy fight at at the no, garden? No, but I saw that I saw it on TV. Yeah, so, and it was it was just it was the same thing, right? It was yeah, all the Puerto Ricans and all the Irish people, and I I could not I don't know who had the bigger fan base. Honestly, it was that dope. Yeah, was, and you must have been sick. Yeah. That yeah. fight, oh man, I was such that that you know it's so crazy because I was on a Terrence Crawford undercar um undercard, and they would they would a co-main fight right after their fight. Everybody broke out. Nobody even stayed for, for yeah. Crawford. Yeah. Who was so fighting you, that night? Oh, uh, some, some, you know, some pumpkin. Yeah. Mind you, mind you, they both, <laughs> both of them, both of them barely made anything on that purse, and they sold out the garden. That's the I crazy thing. Women's boxing is so disrespected. You know, it's just like, <laughs> and I, that pisses me off because they, tr uh, you know, women train just as hard. As, yeah. as male fights. And I think you guys deserve three uh, minute rounds. Three right? minutes. It's, yeah. It's, you know, insane. That's it's like you're fully you capable. Can. Like, women come in the same exact shape, if not better shape. They're offensive minded, Um, a lot of them. And, and I women just don't, fucking women love women will boxing. never back down. Women will never back, never. And this is not to take anything away from men, but men will gracefully bow out or gracefully acknowledge another man as the better man men have their discipline in that sense women we are too egotistical and narcissistic to ever say another woman is better than us so because of that that attitude you get that shit in the fucking ring which is amazing yeah that's amazing. Shit is like, man, I, i've seen some of you know, some um, it's like beautiful brutality yeah I mean, even yeah, the way that that specifically the Serrano and Hardy fight, I have Serrano like beef. I predict that she will win. I thought she was, you know, yeah. crispier. She I has think, I think a lot of us. I think a lot of us just sound. thought she would have like, yeah, she would have, she would have. But she didn't stop her. And I thought she was gonna stop her ass. You did not. Nah, I didn't think that. I just thought she was gonna outbox her. I didn't think she oh, was gonna. I, I knew she was gonna outbox her. But the night of when I was watching yeah. that fight, I thought she was gonna. Because the first her. round, right? The night of. Yeah, first round was crazy. The first one was crazy, but you know what's something? But it was crazy because the, the, if they would have had three minutes, because if you actually watch that fight, Heather was the tide started to turn in the fight. If you, if when, because I was actually there, and you all remember, and it was like, yo, if they, if she had the three minutes in that round, I think not to say she would have won. I think that Serrano would have still outboxed her, but it would Heather would have put in a lot more in the fight if had she had the extra minute in those rounds. Because yeah. like at the end, like towards like round, I want to say like three, four especially round four, and then she started picking shit up, but then the fucking bell would ring. <laughs> yeah. like, so, 
Yeah, it was a yeah, good fight. Yeah. I would love to see a rematch. I would totally pay for a rematch for that shit, honestly. Yeah, I, I actually, um, you know, it's interesting. I, there needs to be a, a union or something for women's boxing because they need to be paid. They need to be compensated for their fucking yeah. work. I mean, the fact that they're grossly underpaid. It's like no, look at look at what's her name, Clarissa, right? Two time Olympic champ. Now, how much she got? Like a few titles, and she's still she she's still living in Michigan. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, wild. It's wild. It's crazy. That's crazy. You know, and, but it, I mean, it, but and that's why like a lot. That you know, I think. What was that? I said it's like that across the board, and and, and that's that, that's the, the point about like the women's pay gap, like that exists everywhere. But you see it predominantly in sports. Like when you look at on like USA, was it the soccer team? The women's team are the ones that keep winning the fucking the the, the championships. Yeah, but they don't get paid the same as the men. Right. And I know it's like they don't get the same promotion, same marketing, because I feel like with the fights, I mean, excuse me, with uh, soccer, if I'm not mistaken, they, I think it's like um, endorsements, right? I think that's where like, a lot of the men's team get stuff right, on, right, but that right, comes right. from promotion. So if you put the same amount of money into women's soccer for the same promotion, people like It deserves soccer. the same attention. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It deserves the same um, uh, attention and and and, 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 and the same voice, and it's not given that. It's getting better, but it, you know, it, it, slowly it's, but surely. Slowly but surely, but you know, look, it's not the same. If, if I ever get the platform for that, not, let me not say if, when. Excuse me, when I when I get the platform, this is part of like that, you know, my steps towards politics. But when, even just the music platform, and I could like go on Instagram Live and just start shedding light on an issue like this, like payment in women's boxing. Yeah. Like, that's shit I want to do. Like, but I got to build up like who the fuck I am and my brand. And that's, that's basically what I'm doing right now. I'm just slowly building up my brand and building certain relationships with people. Like, I'm doing things from the ground up. Like, I, I read a lot. I read a lot of business shit. I, I understand negotiation. And I, I, I'm well read. So, you know, I, I'm built for this shit. Um, with that being said, I'm I love the boxing because that shit teaches me patience. And for what I'm doing, I need a lot of patience. And I'm not really a patient individual, but you know, the boxing helps me with that. But I definitely want to utilize everything that I have to push women in general. And whether it's women in boxing, women in music, I don't give a fuck what it is. Just I need women. Just give us the same playing field. You don't gotta give us no, don't don't give us a head start. That's we don't want that shit. Just give us the same fucking playing field. If we can't make it up here, then okay, we can't make it here. But just give us the opportunity to prove, not even to you, to prove to ourselves that we can do the shit. Right, right, so. right, right. Well, it's I mean, not even, it should be. And everybody in general, not just women, all humans, all human beings, right. all human beings, exactly. all human beings should right. be here. Men, women, black, white, gay, straight, trans, whatever, all right. human beings should be given the same equal foundation to start from. Everybody that works hard, you move up. If you don't work hard, oh well. You know I mean, right. and that's on you. But like, it shouldn't be because you know you belong to this category. It should just be because you don't want to fucking do what the fuck you need to do. Right, right. Is that simple? But yeah, but as, long as, as long as there's dirt bags out there who call uh who who attend Yankee games and they're not even part of the team, they're like, we lost yesterday. <laughs> Those individuals. <laughs> is that is gonna be a slow moving process? Because guys like that. Are the fucking worst. Yo, Guys who are not part of the team, but they say we fucking lost yesterday. Those are the same guys that like they be like, "Well, you got on that Mets shirt." Yo, I hate y'all motherfuckers. I hate like leave me the fuck alone. I love the fucking Mets. Let me be that's depressed and all, like let me be depressed in peace. Right? It's the same thing as being a Nick fan. I'm sure it's the colors, orange and blue. Like leave us the fuck alone. But, like I don't need you to point out the fact that I'm a Mets fan. I know I'm a Mets fan. It's but fucking... y'all fucking Yankee fans. They do this shit all the time. Yo. Uh, uh, you got the ha, 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 you got the losers on. I'm like, yeah, like grow the fuck what? up. Like, who are you? <laughs> yeah, it's like these are grown ass men. And you know what's worse than a Yankee fan? A fucking Yankee cologne. That's the worst <laughs> shit. A Yankee <laughs> fan that smells like Yankee cologne. Yo, and then dirt bags. Like, yo, then they don't even wear like the Derek Jeter jersey. They wear like like fucking a rod. Fuck a rod. But they, they like, uh. but it's like they. They wear the most of not, or they wear like, remember what's his name? I used to hate Gary Sheffield when he was and on the yeah, Yankees. Oh. I fucking hated him. When he was on the Yankees, it was when it was Gary Sheffield and A Rod together. I hated the fucking both of them. Like, seriously. Like, if I could have done, if I could have done voodoo on them at that time, I fucking shouldn't have. I hated their guts. 
this mad, they just obnoxious, super fucking obnoxious. And now A Rod is married to my my future wife. And I'm not a lesbian, but I would totally be J Lo's girlfriend because she looks like she would take care of me. She would just pay all my bills. Mm. She might want to like break out the strap one and I would have to like mentally prepare for that. But if it means she's paying all my bills <laughs> <laughs> and I could say I'm J Lo's girlfriend, fuck it. It's J Lo. Yo, you know she go, you know she lives in the building right by our gym, right? That's she? Yeah, the, the same building as uh, Chelsea Clinton, the one right right next to, you know, the, the one right next to, um, to Mendez. Oh, wow. Which I'm Yo. glad you brought up Mendez because that's another place that we, that we rest uh, that's in like a peace, sanctuary. Francisco Mendez. Yeah, rest, rest in, in peace. peace, man. He, um, he, he, you know, he founded this great gym. Uh, and that's another, you know, I crossed paths cross paths with a lot of people who are considered close friends to mine. That's why I fucking learned how to really box. And it's an absolutely beautiful place. And the owner recently passed away. So shout out to his uh, daughter. His daughter's name is Luz, right? Luz. Yeah, Luz and son Frankie. Yeah, so shout out to them. Rest in peace. What a beautiful thing to leave behind. Yo, Aida, you're the bomb buggy. I'm so glad we were able to do this. Yo, real quick, before you cut me off, before you cut me off, let me give your people a quick story. Cause this yeah, I want to hear it. J-Lo and Mendez, I swear to God, this is a real, everything I say is true. One day I was in the, in the gym, I was in the, in the front ring, right? In the low ring and shit. So I'm shadow boxing, my, 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 a little boy, my bad. I'm here, I'm here. A little boy gets in the ring, right? And it's like, starts annoying me. So now I'm like, like play, play shadow boxing with him and shit. I, I, I. So then, like, he really trying to, like, hit me, right? I said, bet. I said, I'm going to get, I said, if you can hit me, like, I'm going to bet you, a, I'm going to make you a bet. If you can hit me, I'm going to give you a dollar, right? And if, you know, and, and if if you can't hit me, then you got to give me a dollar. So whatever. So I'm joking. With, so first, he's not hitting me. He's not hitting me. And I'm like, nah, like, I'm going to be nice. I'm not going to be a dick. First of all, I do argue with kids. I'm just letting you know that I always argue with children. I do not give a fuck how old you are. I will Yo, fucking argue no with one's kids. Except <laughs> No one's except for confrontation from Aida Gator. <laughs> no one. So, but but I'm also nice and shit. So I'm like, let me like let him hit me, right? So right. I was like, oh, get on the floor. I was like, all right, cool. Go to locker room, get a dollar. And then I had a ring pop. And I was like, I'm going to give him a dollar and a ring pop. Go to the kid. And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, a dollar? Is that it? I'm like, yeah, that's what we fucking bet. So I left. Yo, 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 I kid you not. You know who the kid was? Oh. J Lo's son, Max. Oh wow! On fucking God, I swear to God, the funniest shit ever. And I know for a fact he probably went home to J Lo, six degrees of separation. He probably said, "Let me tell you what this poor lady did in the gym. She, she gave me a dollar. Like she couldn't afford to give me a hundred dollars. He probably shamed me. He probably financially shamed me to Jennifer Lopez. Let's that's put this out. Yeah, you know that's that, that was story. Financially was shamed. I was financially shamed to J Lo. It's basically what happened. That's crazy, right? That is a that's a do, an adorable story. First of when all, when I meet J Lo, because when I meet her, he? this was a couple years ago. So I, I mean, I don't know. So this was like maybe like 2017, 2018. So I don't know. Was he like seven, eight, oh, nine, that's ten? Recently. That's recently. Yeah, yeah. And he was like, I mean, he wasn't like a teen. So I guess like nine, eight. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. One of those like ages. I mean, you probably know better than me. Yeah. It's like, you know, I got parents who like, Yo, don't let people who don't have money. kids, it could be like, my, my, my daughter's eight, and they're like, is your daughter, uh, how's your daughter get? Is she in high school? I'm like, no, nah, she's only eight. It either, it's like always one extreme side of the spectrum. Yeah, I'm like that. Yo, when, when I be asking, like, I do the same thing. I'm like, how is she? Five, 17, yeah, yeah, yeah. 20? <laughs> like, like, she's going to college. Listen, man, the motherfuckers grow fast. But yeah, but basically, you know, my future son shamed me, but it's all good. Do you want kids? At the moment, no. I will say if I was if I was financially stable, like I could like take care of a kid on my own, provide them. Listen, man, let me tell you, let me tell you something. No, 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 no. I'm not, no, I'm I'm not trying to encourage me. you to have unprotected sex, but it's always a way. Shit, man. No. I was I was no no no. I, I hate wasn't financially stable. stable when I had no, child. No, 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 no. That's no. no. As someone that was fucked up mentally from growing up poor, I can't do that to another human being. So I want to make sure I'm able to like, if I can't, I need to be able to give you the same opportunity as everybody else. That's all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, it. Yeah. That's it. This is the same shot at life. And, and, and like, I can't like 
always be working. So now I can't like build up confidence in you or, you know, like show you that you love the next Y and Z. Man, so, listen, if you got man, pregnant this afternoon, I'm confident in nine months, cool. you'll figure that shit out because you're an adaptable human being. And you I am. But, so but, go out there, have a kid and prove yourself wrong. Nah, 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 nah. Because you know what? Because I'm in the motherfucker. Yeah, that morning, sounds misogynistic, dude. right? You have a kid and cut it out. <laughs> Yeah, have a kid and cut out this rap business. You should, yo, that's some yo. People gonna tell me that shit too. Remember they told Lauren Hill that. <laughs> yo, what's Where's up? Where's he at now? What's wait, say that again. Say that again. Remember they told that they told Lauren Hill that. Oh, yeah. They told him about have a kid. Cut it out with all this music and dancing making. Have a kid. And, nah, yo, they told up? her don't. No, they told her don't have a kid, and she had the kid. Yeah, she had mad kids. She had like a little. Yeah. She had a tribe. She yeah. literally had like she the still be a kid. She might be popping out a kid right now as we talk. And, and, and she, yeah, she probably is. But I love Lauren Hill. And real quick, the only reason she was like, she was never crazy. She came out about the Vatican and them being fucked up to poor people in South America. And because of that, that was when the U.S. was like, ah, oh, you didn't pay taxes. Now we're going to shame you. It was like this whole thing. But she wasn't crazy. Just want to throw that out there. Yeah, yeah. I always loved Lauren Hill. I just thought that she want. I, I thought maybe she was turned off by the music business, and she. Didn't I mean, that was part family. of it. I didn't. But, I didn't know but, too much about it. Yeah, they 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 basically blackballed him. And you remember White Club? He was a dirtbag too. He did some dirtbag shit. So they were together, right? Yeah, that yeah, entire right. the, the the album the the miseducation of Lauren Hill that entire shit was basically about him. Oh yeah, yeah. Wow, that's a great album. That was yeah. It was six six Grammys, right? I think. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, it won a lot of awards. That was, that was, yeah, that was the shit. I'm, t- I'm gonna have me a Lauryn Hill album too before I die. It ain't what gonna win no die? award. It's not gonna win no Grammys. <laughs> it's gonna be one of the albums of people like, yo, that was, that was, yo, she, that was, yo, she put her, she put everything in that. I'm gonna That's give dope. one of those. Let, would you be interested? Or, do you freestyle or are you more of like a writer or you do both? I do both. Um, it really just depends on my mood. Usually when I'm like high, high, I would definitely freestyle. Would you be interested? I, and this is something I'm throwing it out there and I'm not going to, uh, I'm not into like surprising people. Like let's say I did another um, podcast or whatever and had some cool motherfuckers with the same wave, same energy as us and they were rappers too. And not like a battle, but everyone kind of spits a oh, little Oh, like bit. a cypher? Like a cypher? Yeah. yeah. I, would love yeah. To, I would love to be in the middle of that from the comfort of my own home. <laughs> oh, that's kind of dope. Yeah. Right? What's yeah, that shit gotta up? be they gotta be cool because like I'm mad fun. I'm fun. Like i if people in your men people in Mendez will probably tell you that shit. I just be rapping and like no beat, especially when it's acapella and shit. I'm literally like Cameron. I I'm Cameron. So I Cameron is one of my favorite rappers. Yeah, he's, he's a, a yo, yo, he's, he's a misogynist. He literally to... Cameron goes against everything I stand for as a woman. But a, his mom was a crackhead, so he has mommy issues, so he doesn't understand how to love women because no woman ever loved him. So it's psychological, so I get it. And not to say he's excused, but I understand why he's a misogynist. That's it. B, oh, he's so fucking funny. You're the motherfucker's a dirtbag. Yeah, he's funny. A New York dirtbag. I bump the bass on the pop, so the bass <laughs> on your block in front of the H on our block. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> they see oh, that the was on my watch, put their face on my car. That was the the, the the shit with um East Side, right, right, East Side. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he got a bunch of them. Yo, but what was the line in that same in that same verse about um shit? Wait, can you finish? There was a line in that verse. Shit, wait, can you rap the rest of it? Because that was from that Jim Jones shit, right? Yeah, it was a it was certified gangster. He said, it was a, uh, "Put the uh, I I I bumped the bass on nah, the." Nah, it was towards the end. So the it was bass, the end of it. yeah. Now I, now I gotta remember. I gotta look. I'm about to go download that shit after. Yeah, and we can we can we, we can always touch it up next time. I just don't want to pull it no, up. No, like no, nah, that's dope. Yo, seriously, this is dope. And you gotta give me back. Yo, when my book is finally released, I gotta get back on the shit. Oh, for and, sure. And, and I want so, and I, yo, and I want I thanked you before we went on uh on record mode, but I gotta thank you again because yo. My people, this shit wasn't easy to set up. First of all, I dirtbagged her with dates seven times over, but for the right reason. I wanted to make sure we were okay. And then the one time I finally got it, I'm like, okay, I figured out the Zoom shit. Zoom I said, cut off because these goddamn kids are being homeschooled. Yeah, yo, like your kids. And people are working from home. 
those dumb yo and when, when people working from home in those dumb ass zoom conferences if you're not speaking you're supposed to mute your fucking self on zoom like you need to know that mute yeah, yourself. nobody wants to hear you eat pistachio nuts or hear your fucking baby crying you definitely right. want to hear your fucking baby crying. nobody never said oh i'm, I'm interested in hearing that baby's cry <laughs> no one ever Fuck yo, you're the bomb boogie i appreciate your time aida we're gonna um we're gonna do this again, and I love the the fact that you're into maybe you know having another uh someone sit down, another two people, and I think it could, it could be a nice wavelength. I think it could be a good network, and I think it'll be a dope vibe. So we'll try to do that next time around. All right, that sounds good. But thank you for having me, Sergio. It's My pleasure. A pleasure. Yo, it didn't cut off. The good money. <laughs> Peace, God. I'll see you later. Take care.